We're kickstarting December off with a 12 Days of Christmas cookie series. For our first cookie, we're making these peppermint hot chocolate cookies. Nice and soft, almost brownie-like cookie with a chocolate ganache and crushed candy canes on top. What a special cookie! Looks like fun, let's get started! First things first, we need 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. That's exactly one normal size bag of chocolate chips. I, however, have several partially used, partially opened bags of chips ranging from regular size to mini. If you're in the same boat, grab a food scale and weigh out 12 ounces. To a pot over medium heat, we're going to melt half a cup of butter and add in our chocolate chips. We're going to melt this until everything is nice and smooth. While that's cooling down, to a big bowl we need one and a quarter cup of light brown sugar, three eggs, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Mix, mix, mix. Mix until combined. I will post an ingredients list towards the end of this video. No need to write anything down. It should also be posted in the video's description box along with the directions. Once everything has been mixed, slowly add in your melted chocolate. If it's still warm, which it probably will be, add in just a little bit at a time. If you add it all in right away, there's a slight chance you might make scrambled eggs. <laughs> Yuck. We don't want that now, do we? Once it looks like your eggs are fine, add in the rest of the melted chocolate. Give everything a good final mix. Okay, now we're ready for our dry ingredients. We need a quarter's cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. The recipe says to stir in the dry ingredients, so that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it also says to refrigerate the dough for at least two hours or until the dough is firm. I hate waiting. I hate waiting. It does look like brownie batter. Okay, we'll cover it and stick it in the fridge for two hours. <laughs> Grr. Well, what do you know? <laughs> it's the next day, way longer than two hours. <laughs> so of course our dough is rock hard. <laughs> Any normal person would let this dough soften up before attempting to work with it. But it's the holidays, we don't have time for that. We got things to bake. <laughs> Once you can scoop out your dough, roll them into balls like so and place them on a parchment lined baking sheet. Into the oven at 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. And here they are, fresh from the oven. And since we're gonna spoon on ganache and add on crushed peppermint, I'd suggest grabbing a measuring cup and while it's still hot, gently press down just a bit. We want a slightly flat surface, otherwise all of the stuff we're gonna put on top just might roll off the cookie. We're gonna let these cool completely before we move on to the next step, which is the chocolate ganache. To a bowl, we need four tablespoons of melted butter. To the melted butter, add in a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, a quarter cup of hot water, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and two cups of powdered sugar. Give that a good mix. I did swap to a whisk, you might want to as well. If at any point you think your chocolate might be starting to firm up a bit too soon, you can always pop your chocolate in the microwave for 20 seconds. Now here's a step you might want to consider doing before making the ganache. <laughs> Crushing the candy canes. <laughs> I goofed and did it after. It's fine. Everything's fine. Unwrap your candy canes, stick them in a gallon Ziploc baggie, grab a measuring cup, and start crushing. Now you can break these up as small as you'd like or leave them chunky if you prefer. This looks good enough, now back to the ganache. I did pop it in the microwave for 20 seconds just to get it flowing again. Now I'm going to use a piping bag. If you don't have one, a regular spoon works just as good. We're going to pipe or spoon on a good dollop of chocolate right on top of the cookie. While it's still wet, add on the crushed candy canes. As you may have noticed, we didn't actually put in any peppermint flavoring into the cookie itself. The peppermint part of the cookie is all in the crushed candy cane that we're adding on top. So that being said, if you're not a big fan of peppermint, you could swap it out for some festive sprinkles instead. Regardless of whatever you choose to put on top, I highly suggest putting a piece of parchment underneath your cooling rack to help catch anything that falls or drips off your cookie. Let your chocolate completely set before stacking the cookies. As you can see here, it's almost fully set, definitely not tacky. This cookie is very brownie-like. Great chocolate flavor, a perfect Christmas cookie. Here's that ingredients list. Thanks for watching. Be sure to come back tomorrow as we continue our 12 days of back-to-back -back Christmas cookies. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out, and I'll see you all in the next video.